Okay, so in this video we're going to start looking at what we call measures of spread. And measures of spread are different from the averages. These actually measure how spread out the data is rather than an average value for the data. And there's three different, three main types of measures of spread. And two of them I've got written down here, which you've probably seen the range before, and probably some people have seen the interquartile range as well before, depending on how much statistics you've done in the past. And the next type we're not going to do in this video, but it's the most accurate measure of spread, and that's called the standard deviation. But because it's long and more complicated, I'll make a separate video for that one. So in this video, we're going to look at these two. So what's the range? The range is basically just the biggest minus the smallest value. So what's the interquartile range? The interquartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. And we'll see exactly what that means. When we look at these examples here. So first of all the range. That's the range. 13 biggest value, 2 smallest value. I subtract the smallest from the biggest and that gives us the range. So the range is 11. For the interquartile range I need to put these numbers in order of size. So I'm going to say 2, 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 13. And then what I'll do is I'll locate the median. So this is the median. Now I've got a lower half of the data which is below the mean, median I mean, and higher, which is above the median. So what I do is I find the median of these two values, which is just the middle ones. So it's 10 and 3. So that's the upper quartile, because this is the higher amount, and that's the lower quartile. Then it says we'll take those away, so that's going to be 10 minus 3 which is 7. So the interquartile range for this data is 7. So basically what you do to find the interquartile range, just as a recap, first you locate where the median is, and then you've got the half below the median in your data, and the half above the median in your data, you work out the median of this part, the part that's lower, and the part that's higher. And you subtract the mean for median from the higher away. No, you subtract the lower part away from the higher, sorry. And that gives you the interquartile range. Next one I want to do here. I've got an even number of data so this is going to be slightly harder but not too much harder we already know how to find the median for these so notice here I've got eight numbers in my data and the middle two is these two two fives and so the median here is actually going to be 5 because both of these values in the middle are both 5. So then, what I get is, I've got a 5 here, but what I do is I don't have these two in the middle because the median is only one number, I make an extra number, 5. The median would go in between these two, so now I've got three fives. Because I need to add in the median. 
So notice I've still got my eight original numbers here that I started off with. So I haven't really changed much at all in this case. Just because of how it worked out, it's just pure coincidence. You have to still find the median, but in this case we could have done it just from this data and we would have gotten the same result. So, what I do here is these two for this one, so that's four. And for this one, what is it going to be? It's going to be halfway between these two, so it's going to be six and a half. So this is going to be six and a half or six point five. We'll do six point five minus four, which will be two point five. So when the quartile range she has two point five. And just to show you a quick thing, let us rub this bit out here and just do it from what I originally had. Don't do this in general. In general, don't do this because you'll get the wrong answer. But I'm just going to show you the coincidence we had in this case. I've got four numbers here, another four numbers here. The median is going to be these two. So that's four for that part. And it's going to be these two numbers here. That's be four for that part. So that's six and a half. So then that again, six point five minus four, which is two point five. So in this case, we'll get the same answer. But generally, you wouldn't. You would find the median first. And the median would go in the middle. The median always goes in the middle of your data. The median's always your centre value when your data's in numerical order. So remember that. So in this case we get three fives. Because you always add in the median. And it goes in the middle. In this case, the median was already here. So this example wasn't as complicated, but I thought I'd better show you one where it is more complicated, just that people don't get confused with them.